Hi, I'm Luke Ferris, digital marketing specialist at Gordon Food Service and professed lover of dog dancing videos. Welcome to Social Media Foundations. By the end of this seminar, we hope to empower you with the tools to get social media working towards your operation success. Joining me is Gordon Food Services, North American Senior Digital Marketing Specialist, Kristen Johnston. Kristen, thanks for joining me. Hi, Luke. Thanks for having me. I'd like to start off our conversation with one question about your favorite to-go dish to order from a restaurant. Um, first of all, that's very hard to pick. It's usually an eeny, meeny, miny, mo between five things, but I would say pizza. It's always a classic. You can put anything or everything on it. It's always good. That's a go-to. It's a beloved favorite. Everyone loves it. It's universal. I love that. Kristen, we're here to talk about social media today, and it's a big, big topic. It's become important as people's cup of coffee in the morning, really. But today we want to talk about the basics of social media and how it can help your business succeed without having to spend a ton of money or time because you don't have a ton of that right now. If you don't have a social media account for your operation or you haven't opened it in years, it's okay. This is a safe space. Just because you're not an expert on social media doesn't mean you can't use it effectively. In fact, if you're not on social media all the time, you're probably doing something more important, honestly. So we've collected all the frequently asked questions uh, from our teams from you and narrowed them down to five practical applications that you can use today, today, with a simple few taps of your phone. All right, Kristen, let's go. Let's get into it. Creating content. Creating content. Such a big topic with social media. Once you have an account, you want to put stuff out there on the internet. The challenge is, is really keeping it up to date and spending all that time updating content. Kristen, how do you think operators can not get overwhelmed with just having to create content all the time? Yeah, it's a great question, right? It can be a little bit daunting to see how noisy or busy of a space social media can be. But the best thing that you can do is just be good in one space, just be updated in one space. You don't have to look at the whole social media universe and say, I have to get content out there five times a day on 10 different channels. Frankly, we can't even do that either. Um, that's a very busy and very large ask. So our biggest recommendation is find a channel that you know you can keep updated and do it well. Focus on one and just try to tackle one at a time and one where you feel like your customers are really engaging with you. Yeah, and it's really important to be clear, consistent, uh, and to let your customers know what they need to know. Um, don't get sidetracked with all the other things social media can do. You wanna be clear about what you can provide to your customers or potential customers. Now let's talk about the actual visuals on social media, taking them with a phone, uh, taking them with a camera, it's really hard to take photos sometimes, but we actually think that taking photos, photos, especially of food, is easier than it seems. What practical tips do you have for our operators when trying to improve their photography skills, especially with food? Yeah, you know what? What, what is more fun than shooting food? And I would say don't underestimate your phone. Um, phones are built nowadays that the camera functionalities are a lot better than you think they are. They really are enough and they really are good enough for your social media channels. They really can allow you to have some beautiful photography. One of the biggest things is use what's at your disposal. You probably have some awesome natural lighting in your restaurant or maybe even in, at your house and use that natural lighting or find a friend that is really into photography and wants to maybe get a meal you know, with you and, and take a picture of your delicious dishes. There are also so many free design apps out there. Facebook Creator Studio is actually built into the platform and they've advanced their capabilities dramatically in the past few years. Another free option that we love is Canva. Both of those are such easy, user-friendly platforms, and a filter is your friend. People yes. are used to seeing filters, and there is nothing wrong with putting a filter on your food. But let's get practical with the natural lighting, because we can have an example right now. I am naturally lit. Surprise, surprise. You may think there is a million-dollar lighting kit and makeup that I was went to in my trailer earlier, but no, I'm just standing in front of my windows. 
And the photo you see on the slide, I took that. I know, surprising. All you have to do is find a window. I found a window in my house and put that dish right on a table. I went like this, took a photo, boom. It's that easy. So those simple things I think are really critical. And like you said, Kristen, there's so many free or very affordable design apps or within the actual apps itself to help you. If you're on Facebook and you're about to upload a photo, if you just click that cursor, you can edit something. You can put a filter on it. They want you to use their platforms and they've made it very easy to make photos even better. And one of the biggest things that you should notice about the imagery that you're taking or the, the things that you're putting on your content is keep it simple. You know, customers want to know just the basic things about you and you know what, sell what you're good at, your food. If you're a pizza joint, show all the pizza that you have. If you're an Italian joint, show that comfort food pasta. You don't have to be good at every single thing. Just focus on who you are and the strengths that you already have. I totally agree with that. I know we were talking off air about our favorite thing that a lot of our favorite restaurants do is take a photo of the menu of the day. What's the specials? What are you guys serving? It's really simple to do, but from a customer standpoint, which we both are, it's really helpful when we're making a decision on the weekend of where we want to get our food. All right, coming up next, this is a big one, Kristen, customer service on social media. We've all seen the complaints and comment threads and debates on social media. What's the right way to respond to complaints on social if you're an operator? Oh, this can be a slippery slope, but you know what? It is one of the most, if not the most important thing for you to pay attention to as a business on social media. The first place that people go to leave a review, leave a negative comment, leave a positive comment today is social media. And the best thing that you can do is don't delete those dirty, negative, offensive, whatever they might be, don't delete those comments. Even though you want to, you want to show all of your positivity and positive ratings, you actually look better to your customers if you can keep those negative comments there and take it one step further and make sure that you're responding to them. The best thing that I see um, as a user or as a customer is when I see a business respond to a negative comment and even if the only thing you can do at that time is acknowledge it, that speaks volumes, but even better, can you acknowledge it and make it right? That's going to keep a customer at your business. And another thing is make sure that you don't just focus on the negative comments. Those should be your first priority to really hone in on that customer service and making sure that your patrons are happy, but make sure you share and comment and thumbs up and like all of those positive comments too. A customer might be sharing their favorite dish or saying that um, a certain waiter or waitress was their favorite. Make sure you acknowledge them and thank them for coming in. Yeah, those are really powerful ways to engage with customers, to celebrate customers, and to build your business in really turning those lemons into lemonade when you're, when you're talking about social and negative comments. Okay. You talked about the negative comments that you see, but there's a, a certain thing on the internet that we call a troll. How do you spot a troll and what do you do if you see a troll? Yeah, you know, the first thing you do when you see a troll is remember not to feed them. They are hungry and yes, they'll they are. keep coming back for more. So let's back up and talk about what, what it looks like to have a troll on your account or what it looks like just to see a troll in the internet. So sometimes these people are not actually people and they're spam and it's just bots and those are part of social media and the internet and really should be totally ignored. You can usually see those and spot spam accounts if they don't have pictures, they don't have any followers, they're, they have misspellings maybe in their name, something like that will usually tell you that it's spam. If it's an actual person and, an, and maybe an actual customer, we differentiate a negative comment and a troll by someone who maybe is never going to be satisfied and someone who maybe is on the internet to 
argue, um, yeah. to argue and to keep coming back for more. And so that's when we say, don't feed the trolls. Sometimes as a business, you can really use your common sense and your better judgment to notice that, you know what, if I respond to this, it's going to fuel the fire and yeah. it's going to keep them coming back and it, they're never going to be happy. And then I'm going to have an argument on social media on my hands. And that's what we don't want to happen for you. Yeah, I, I think that's totally correct. And I think, you, like you mentioned, using your business practices and bringing them into how you deal with social media customer service. If you have a customer at a restaurant that's complaining about the food, how, how do you respond to that? Do you send over a waiter? Do you have the manager come in and say, hey, we're going to fix this. We're going to give you a gift card. But if you have somebody that's standing up and yelling profanities in your operation, you're probably going to kick them out. It's same thing with the internet troll. Either report them, which most social media platforms have a way to report spam or people that are being inappropriate or negative, or just ignore them because they probably want attention. I think that's a really practical way to deal with those scary trolls on the internet is just think about how you're, you're normally doing that in your business day to day and applying that to the internet. Another thing that we want to talk about that we both, it's kind of our, our pet peeve is the worst thing is on a Friday night, you're with friends, you are, are asking the question that we all ask on a weekend with friends, where are we going to eat? You go on to a restaurant's social media profile, the information is not updated. The menu's not on there. The hours are incorrect. It's really, really frustrating as a customer. So just make sure to update your digital signage. Just like you would update your sign on your actual operation restaurant, you need to update your social media accounts with hours and things like that. It's really important to do that because a consumer can make a decision based on that. That's right. And there was really no better time than a global pandemic that forced restaurants to make sure that their online and digital signage was up to date. I saw customers um, in restaurants updating their Facebook pages that, you know, when we talked about photos and photography and phones, they just took a picture of their menu laying on the table. But you know what? I went to their Facebook page and I ordered from them because they had a limited COVID menu and they posted it on their page. So the information was still there, really regardless of the format. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be up to date and accurate. That's so true. I live in a small town, tourist town. And even sometimes I go to restaurants or I look on their social media profiles and they haven't updated their hours from the summer. So keep applying these practices and these skills and these rhythms that you've made during this global pandemic, because it's going to serve you past the pandemic in the future to have these kind of rhythms of updating your menu. And like you said, it's about being clear, being accurate and being up to date. Kristen, we wanted to show our operators and our customers kind of the place you go to, to update your accounts. Like we said, this is a really critical thing to do and really the base level when we're talking about improving your social media and keeping your social media up to date. Right now, I'm in the Facebook backend, Facebook business manager. This is where you update your page info. We have links to these resources at the It's Your Business booth. Here's Facebook's backend, Facebook Business Manager. This is where you update your page info about your business. As you can see, this is Gordon's Food Services backend. Here we have our name, a description, the category of our business. So you might put restaurant, the phone number, our, our email account, website, address, all this information. This is really easy to update. It will take you a few minutes, but it's going to be really important. It also has an opportunity to change your hours. If there's anything that comes up like a holiday, this will help show your potential customers when and where they can get information. Here's Google My Business, the back end of Google. If you're searching for a business or a restaurant, this is what pops up when people search in Google. It has the info of your operation, what's going on, even photos. Here I'm at the homepage of Google My Business for one of our distribution centers. I'm going to click Info, and this is going to pop up all the information that's going to be very critical for my potential customers or customers to know. It's going to have the hours of my operation, let me know if I've closed or temporarily or permanently closed. It's going to also have my special hours, 
phone number, contact information. This is the key stuff that you're going to want to update and keep updated because that's what people see on Google when they type in your operation. All right, let's talk about growth impact in social media. Operators spend a lot of time doing all these things to keep their business going, um, but maybe don't have a time at all, if any, to keep their social media up to date. But how can you grow? How can you uh, best utilize social media? Because a lot of operators ask, is it even worth it to do social media? What do you uh, suggest to operators to best utilize their accounts in their social media? Yeah, you know, it's a fair question. Um, just like Luke mentioned earlier, I'm sure that you have a million and a half other things that are keeping your business afloat and keeping your operations running. But start to think about your social media and your digital presence as another tool of your operations. You really are going to get what you put into it, but you don't have to pay for followers or you don't have to have 3,000, 10,000, 50,000 followers in a week. Remi remind yourself that it's going to take time. The best growth is organic, natural growth. You are going to get quality followers over time. So don't feel like you have to have a certain number or a certain time frame to get to a certain number of followers. You just have to get your name out there in a consistent way. And maybe you're thinking, well, how do I do that on every channel? Like we said before, try to focus on the key ones for restaurants, Facebook, Google, Yelp, Instagram. Those are the best platforms for you to be on. They both focus on photography, which is the best form of sharing food. Until I keep saying this, until we get to a point where we have a smellogram or a tasteogram, <laughs> the photos are going to be the best thing to sell what you're good at, which is your food. And make sure that you're really focusing on that customer service. And those platforms are really built for both of those things. It's a great way where people do research. Like we talked about on that Friday night, a lot of new customers, younger demographics are looking on Instagram, Facebook to see, okay, what do they serve? I know they're this type of restaurant or they're located here, but what do they actually serve? And showing it is a great way to bring people in. What's another way that operators can get their social accounts in front of customers if they don't have a big advertising budget or don't have a lot of time like we talked about earlier? What other little things can they do to get their social accounts awareness? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, you don't have to do this with a budget. You don't have to do this by advertising. You can bring digital to the ground and really look at your brick and mortar place do you have your social accounts or handles in your window? Or do you have them printed on your menu? Do you have them at the host stand or on your receipts even? Or you can look at different, different things that you share in the community. Maybe you put flyers up or maybe you connect with some local partners who can share for you on your behalf. Almost every, every area here has a local chamber and those chambers will share your business, your news, and even just sharing businesses and your social accounts and asking people to follow you. Those chambers or those local organizations that focus on small businesses, that's what they're there for, is to share what you're doing and to help you get the word out. That's really their mission and vision and capitalize on that. Yeah, let's talk about influencers. That's uh, a word that we both sometimes cringe at. But what what is an influencer? How can operators use it use it without having to spend five hundred dollars for someone to come in and take a photo in front of their restaurant? You know, I think we cringe at influencers because there are probably influencers that fall under the troll bucket. But you know what? Some don't. There are actual local food bloggers or um, local designers or local right, freelance writers that they really, their mission is really to highlight local businesses and the expense to you could maybe just be covering their meal, which is very minimal. And you're getting the footprint of their blog or their social media accounts. And it's a great way to tap into 
the really beneficial side of influencers. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Also, influencers is just a, it's just a fancy word to say someone who's important in your community, a local celebrity. Think about the old school restaurant technique of having a signed photo of a celebrity that's coming into your restaurant and has your food. Think about it using social media. If you have a local celebrity like Kristen and I have a local celebrity that's a weatherman in our area where we live. What if he comes into your restaurant? You go up to him as an owner. You say, how are you doing? Did you enjoy your meal? Can we take a photo together in front of our restaurant and post on social media and tag you? If they say no, it's okay. If they say yes, it's a great way to get your name out there. So even doing that, finding those people that really care about your operation or already are doing that, if they're already a customer saying, hey, can we take a photo together and post it online? That's a really, really small way, but important way to grow your business and show that you're involved in the community and people actually like going there. Now let's talk about asking for help, Kristen. We all need help sometimes. We both need help sometimes. Just like a kitchen, social media success happens with teamwork, collaboration. You don't do it on an island. How can you operators get help without spending more money? Yeah, great question. You absolutely don't have to do this by yourselves. You know, maybe this just isn't for you. Maybe you're a restaurant owner or a um, restaurant manager or food and beverage manager, and you're sitting there and saying, you know what, this is all well and good, but I don't want to do this myself, or I'm just not sure I'm comfortable with this. That's okay. There are a lot of different ways that you can ask for help and get guidance on other people that can help with your social media. Maybe you have a staff member who is really passionate about social media or really passionate about photography or, or is just plain a foodie. Tap into them and see if they'd want to start making content or start taking photos for your social media accounts. Or maybe you have a really nice um, university or college or community college and there's marketing and photography classes. A lot of those students are looking to build their portfolios or they're looking to have a marketing um, a marketing proposal or business plan that they have to create for their class, tap into them for a semester or two and task them with that. It's not only a challenge for them, which is building the skill sets of our up and coming generations, but it's also allowing you to outsource that without having to, coming to my next point, pay an agency. What we really hear a lot from customers is, do I need to hire an agency? Do I need to hire a third party resource here? That feels expensive and it can be. So I, our biggest piece of advice would be to beware of the agency. It's not a negative thing. They aren't a negative resource by any means, but they can be a costly resource and they can really make keep that financial commitment going long term because their best interest is to keep you on their client list and your best interest is to have somebody consistently helping you with your social media or your marketing so really our big piece of advice with agencies is make sure that you exhaust all of your options before going that route because it's a costly idea and a costly resource there are a lot of other ways and a lot of other things that you can tap into with either zero cost or very little cost to your business. Kristen, I think that's a really, really accurate point when talking about agencies. I know we both worked with them at different levels in our career. One piece of advice in regards to agencies, if you're interested in reaching out to one or they're reaching out to you, try testing them out for an event. Let's say there's a festival in your area or you have a chili cook-off coming up this fall. Try testing them out in smaller segments focused on an event to, to build and grow your business. That way you can see if it was really worth the return on an investment and the financial spend. All right, we're down to our last, but I would say most important point of this seminar. Again, we cannot tell you everything about social media in a 30-minute seminar because it really doesn't begin to scratch the surface of what social media is all about and what you can do, do with it. What's one of your overall takeaways for operators, Kristen, when thinking about social media and, and how they can apply it to their operation? 
Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I'd agree with it that this is probably the most important point of all of the things that we've been asked is just to be yourself, be authentic, be transparent. Um, something that we saw a lot, again, I go back to COVID, of course, because we're all living it, but this is just as applicable outside of this is being transparent. Maybe you had an accident or a fire or you're having repairs and you want to be transparent with your customers about why you're closing for a couple days, or maybe you had an employee test positive for COVID. You know what? I've seen so many restaurants say, we hate to say this, but in the safety of our staff and you, we're going to close down and do X, Y, Z cleaning standards so that we can get back to business and back to serving you. There is so much respect in transparency like that, so much respect among your patrons, as well as your peers in the restaurant industry to shed that positive light on a business that things happen and that sometimes we have to be transparent about something. So the best thing you can do is just be authentic. Again, going back to trying to be everything on social media, that won't work out well for anyone. Any business trying to be more than what they are is not going to work well. And eventually it's going to come out that they aren't everything. And that's not a negative thing. Yeah. I would always say if you serve the best burgers and fries in town, don't talk about serving steaks or serving salads. Talk about burgers and fries. If that's what you do well, be authentic to who you are. Don't act like you're not on social media because Kristen, when it all comes down to it, creating the authentic experience in your operation is the most important thing. Making sure your food, your sa the safety of your staff and customers and how their experiences entering your operation is number one. Social media is a tool to expand and grow what your actual experience is. It shouldn't be the other way because customers, when they come to your restaurant, they want it to, to, it to reflect what they see online and what the experience is online. So really focus on building what you have and letting that lead the way and guide you to what your social media platform is and your social media voice is. Because the worst thing ever is to come to a restaurant, come to an operation, and it doesn't meet the expectations that's put online. That's right. We have resources. Like we said, this is only a one set, one time session. There's so many resources out there for you to take advantage of. Facebook has a ton of resources for small businesses. Over the past 12 months, they've doubled down on supporting small businesses through Facebook's platforms. Here's a bunch of links that you can use. You can really dive into a ton of this. And like we said, if you don't have the time for it, find an employee. Find a marketing class that has the time to dive into these resources. But I would say Facebook has made it very, very user-friendly and very easy for businesses and customers to actually use these resources and expand their social media presence. Another thing is updating your pages on Yelp and Google, claiming them, making sure that if your restaurant is listed on Google and Google Maps, it's your restaurant. So here's some links about claiming your business, how to manage those pages, um, and expanding your accounts. That's really critical because like we said, if you're looking for a restaurant, if you're typing it in Google Maps or in Yelp, you wanna make sure it's accurate and up to date. Also, Gordon Food Services on social media, please tag and follow us. We would love to see you guys tagging us in your creations and your experiences. Again, that's part of the collaboration of social media and why it's so important. And we would love to be a part of that. Kristen, thanks for sharing all your thoughts and thank you customers for watching. We hope this gives you the strength, the empowerment and the courage to go tackle social media. Thanks, Luke. It was great chatting with you today. We're so happy to share this kind of information for our customers. And just remember that Gordon Food Service is there for you. And we're so proud to have the customers that we have. 